I want to show you the dissection of a clam, what the, the body is like inside of a clam. Of course, this is a member of Phyla mollusca, it's a mollusk. And uh, this particular clam is one that uh, is easily available from the grocery store. It's called the purple varnish clam. And uh, this is not a native species here, it actually comes from Asia. They were they actually imported from Jap Japan and farmed here, but they've escaped from the farms now. And you can find them uh, growing in quite a few places if you have a, a quiet beach, like in the Puget Sound area, and kind of sandy, gravelly substrate, probably up high in the intertidal zone, you'll find these things growing there. They're very common there now. Called a purple varnish clam, you can see they're kind of purple on the outside, and, and uh, this material here is called the periostracum. It's a protein that uh, is part of the shell. In some species, there's not much protein when the when the shell is fully formed, but in this one, there's there's quite a bit of periostracum left. So uh, that's that's oftentimes a lot shinier than we see in these. So it's a purple varnish clam, and if you open it up, you see on the inside also, there's purple on the inside of the shell. In fact, any species that you find around here in Washington State that is purple like this uh, is is not a native clam. There's uh, another one, the the uh, manila clam that has a little bit of purple on it, but it also has lines coming out here. So purple varnish clam is the name of this. Natalia obscurata is the name, and it's one of the most common ones sold in supermarkets here. Looking at the external anatomy of the clam, this is, uh, the, the clam, the animal is sitting in here uh, with its, its back is here, so this is dorsal, always the hinge here, where the, this is a hinge ligament right here that, that holds the two shells together, the two valves together. And uh, the, the animal's body is dorsal there and ventral here, and this is anterior and posterior. So this is the right side of the animal. This shell is the right, the right valve, and the one down below is the, the left valve. When this animal was a baby, it started growing right here when it was a little tiny clam, and that, that bump where everything grew from here is called the umbo. That's uh, the very smallest part of the clam there, and usually the, the hinge ligament is anterior to the front of the umbo. That's usually the case. You can see the growth lines here where it's grown for, for several years. Now, in order to open this clam, I had to, to reach in here and cut. There's the uh, adductor muscles. Adduction means to pull things together, like when you pull your feet together, that's adducting your legs. Uh, and there were adductor muscles here. That's the main muscle that a clam has. They, muscles can never push, they can only pull. And here we have, here's where it was anchored to the upper shell and the adductor muscle here. This is the anterior adductor and the posterior adductor back here was holding the shell shut. So I cut those in order to open it up. So now taking a look at the, the, the clam's anatomy on the inside of here, looks like a, a, a big mess and as you can see, as you can tell, one of the things to notice is mollusks are not segmented. They don't come in segments. It's just a big mass of tissue. Remember, this is dorsal, this is ventral, this is anterior to the head end of the animal, and this is posterior uh, back here. I'm sorry, what am I doing here? This is posterior and this is anterior. I, anterior is the side where the umbo is, so it's there. <coughs> head is here, so this is the left valve and the right valve. Now, if you open up uh, in a uh, clam inside, there, there are some major organs that you see right away. Coating the inside of the shell, as you can see here, is the mantle. You can see it's cut up here, but that was the mantle uh, up there as well. That's a special, it's just like a coat around the whole outside of the clam. And uh, that's uh, actually the organ that secretes the shell. In most mollusks, it secretes the shell of some sort. Of course, there's some mollusks that don't have a shell, then they have a, a mantle anyway. You can see how it comes right up to the edge of the shell here, and this is where it was actively secreting new shell along here. Another one of the most prominent things, here's, here's some of the mantle that's collapsed here that was up there when uh, I opened the shell. Now, one of the most prominent things when, when you open the shell is this big piece right here. That's their foot. Their foot is on the anterior side, so their foot is up by their head. In fact, their mouth is right there. So uh, this, on the, the foot is on the anterior end. They stick this out. They, they open up the shell and they stick this out down into the substrate and uh, pump blood down there and make it, make it thick so they can pull themselves down into the substrate. That's how they move around or they can push it, push it out and push themselves around to kind of rock the shell and so forth. So one of the big things to notice is, is the big foot that's here. Another very important feature on bivalves is their, their gills. They, they breathe and, 
and eat, both by using their gills. And in these, the gills aren't very big in this particular species, but typically on some of them, you'll see the gills lying all over this. It's on the, the posterior end of the animal, mostly. Uh, but you'll see the gills lying out here. They're not so obvious here. But if we get down on this one, there are some folds of the mantle right here. See, this is one that's ventral. And here's one that's dorsal. Those are folds of the mantle that are coming inside here. And the gills have kind of collapsed here. But they're inside right here, hanging down uh, under the mantle here. And it's kind of because of the way the mantle came here, it doesn't show the gills very well. So the gills are hanging down like this, very large gills, typically, on the, the, the posterior end of the animal. And the, the way that they feed here is they, they let their shell open a little bit. They relax these adductor muscles, which lets the, the hinge ligament pull the shell open a little bit. And they stick these siphons out. This is the end current and the X current siphon. It's just a fold in the mantle. With some species, it's just, it's just a fold, but here the fold has glued itself together, so it's a tube. And the two tubes here, that's not always that way with clams. But they have cilia inside there, and they beat cilia to suck water in. It always comes in the, the ventral side here, the end current siphon. They pump it across those gills and then pump it out here, the X current siphon. So they're pumping water like that, and they can pump quite a bit of water in a day. And Inside here, when the water comes in, there's plankton and things like that in the water, and the water has to pass through their gills, and their gills have very fine holes in them. And as they pass through the gills, the gills are sticky, they have mucus on them, and those little particles get stuck there. And then they have a little track here, the cilia, that carries all those little particles up to here and swallow it down into their mouth. And in fact, you can see here, this was the gut was cut open a little bit, and you can see some of the, some of the debris here that they'd been eating. That was, that's from inside the stomach right there on the animal. Most of the rest of the body here, besides the mantle, which is obvious, the foot, which is obvious, uh, the incurrent and excurrent siphons can be obvious if they have well-developed ones like this, and the gills are usually pretty obvious. The rest of this in here has the rest of the organs, the heart and the digestive system and the liver and the gonads and things like that. And they call that the visceral mass. The viscera is all your internal organs, and it's just kind of a mass there. They're all coiled around together uh, inside of there. So uh, with their, their, their mouth here, they take in food here, their, their intestine kind of coils down around like this, and then comes out here near the, the, the posterior end. And at the posterior end, they're right near the excurrent siphon, their anus and their urethra, their urine, is dumped there in the mantle cavity here, and it dumps out. Oh, that reminds me of something else, uh, the mantle cavity. Mantle cavities are very important in mollusks, and what it is is the cavity between the mantle and the rest of the body. So it's kind of obvious to see it on this side, where you see the mantle here, and here's the body. Well, this whole space down here that my scalpel is in is the mantle cavity, and there was a mantle cavity up here as well. Well, the mantle cavity underneath the mantle here goes inside there that I cut it open, and around the gills, the gills are hanging in the mantle cavity, the anus and the, the urine and, uh, empty there, and the gonads empty there into the mantle cavity so that it's, get, it's getting pumped out there. So when they defecate it quickly, it gets pumped right out the excrement siphon and uh, is taken away from the body. The way they feed is, as I said, they, they, they pick up these small particles and they bring them down, they swallow them. And uh, they're, they're covered with mucus then when they swallow them. And down inside their stomach here, I'm not sure I can get it out. Let's see if I can find it. They have something called the crystalline style, and it looks kind of like a rolling, like a glass rolling pin. It's rather small, but in these it can get fairly good sized. Sometimes they pop out easily, other times it's a little hard to find. I'm cutting into the visceral mass here. Let's see if I can find it in the stomach. Uh, they have a little pocket in the stomach, and that rolling pin is sitting in there kind of stuck in the pocket and then, then angling up into the rest of the stomach. And cilia in the pocket spin the rolling, uh, spin the, the uh, 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 crystalline style. And as it rolls, it rolls up that mucus and pulls in the food from the outside. So that's how they, that's how they bring the food into their stomach, kind of a unique way. There's really no other group that has that as a crystalline style. Well, I'm not getting to come out. If it came out, it would be maybe maybe about that long, and it would come popping out like a little glass cylinder would come popping out, but I'm not seeing it right now. <clears throat> the, 
The heart, as with most invertebrates, is dorsal. We have a ventral heart, but there, it's dorsal. The heart is up here, and uh, it sucks. They have a, an open circulatory system, so they have the, the blood is just kind of sloshing around among their organs in there, uh, called hemolymph, and they have openings to their heart where they suck the blood into their heart, and then they have an aorta, one going anterior, one going posteriorly. They just pump it out and squirt it down th around the gills, the, the posterior one, and then uh, back around to the, uh, the tissues in their body. Let's see, what else should I mention on here? I think that's the main part. You notice that the foot, uh, again, is, is one of the large, this is the main thing people like to eat, is the foot has a lot of muscle in there, and it's, but it's on the anterior end of the animal. Oh, another thing you can notice is something called the paleo line. You see this line right here, that's where the mantle attaches to the shell. And you'll see it kind of duck here below the adductor muscle there. It kind of goes around the adductor muscle. But if you're identifying clams, a lot of times they want you to look at the paleo line. And on, on the shell, even if this animal wasn't there, you could see the paleo line here. I'll remove some of the mantle up here and see. You can still see the paleo line there. And that's important for helping to identify the species. I think that's all of the, of the issues here. The, the important things are no segmentation, a mantle, which only mollusks have, uh, large gills inside, the, the mantle cavity, large gills, these have a large foot. Other types of mollusks don't have such a large foot, but, uh, but these do. Now, most, uh, the other mollusks have a different way of feeding. Only the clams have a crystalline style like that. Uh, most of them have a radula instead, and we'll talk, when we talk about mollusks, we'll talk about the radula later, but these don't have them. With that, I'll close this video.